So I'm hooking up the backup camera right now. And it's pretty simple. Um, be aware, I just pulled the radio out. Now I don't have a steering wheel control, but these little wires rip out really, really easily. It must have just caught just right and it just ripped the steering wheel control plug right out of the harness. Ripped the wires right out. No big deal to me, but if you buy this radio, just be careful that these things are kind of wimpy. It really didn't take much and it just ripped it right out. So be aware of that, because that would really suck if you needed that. I've got my cable ran. I bought 33 foot. That gave me enough to comfortably reach to the back. And I've just tied it off here. And then you take the red wire off the cable and you run it to this reverse 12 volt positive. This purple and white wire right here. So basically I've got it soldered onto there. I just put a long piece of shrink wrap on it. So I'm gonna tuck this thing all back in now. Show you the rest of how I ran the wire. I'm actually kind of getting used to this. It, it you know, like I said, it's a, it, I don't actually ever hit the screen when I grab the, the shifter I just got right there. I'm getting used to it. It doesn't bother me as much as it did when I first installed it as far as how it looks. This is gonna bounce around like crazy though on your, if you're going off road. Probably just take it off when you're going off road. Just take the face off would be probably what I end up doing. The music still plays with it off, so you can just take the face off. This is just a really Mickey Mouse mounting solution. And this is probably how all these work. Because they're just it's kind of a joke. You'd think they'd have something a little better than this. Let's continue. So I'm gonna put it in reverse. And there's my camera, it's just laying on the ground, so everything's upside down at the moment. But uh, camera's working, and put it in park, and camera goes off. When you hit the camera button, it does nothing, because I don't have power to the camera right now. So the power goes to the camera as soon as I go into reverse. So anyway, there's that. I ran the cable under the dash here, which is pretty obvious. So I came out this little hole right here and I ran it down and then I started tying it off to this stuff. I just strapped it with tie wraps to this stuff. You can kind of see it there. So I followed it through over the tank all the way back and now I'm to here getting this all hooked up. This is just a temporary hookup. I've got my uh, positive and negative to my ver reverse light. And then I just got this is going to the positive on this. And like I say, this was just to test it, make sure it's all working. So I'll go ahead and finish buttoning this all together and then I'll show you what I've done. All right, got the dash all back together. Got this soldered here. This is the uh, trigger wire for the radio to turn to the backup camera. Got the power wire ran and heat shrunk up to here, which I've extended over to here. So I've got power back up to there. Tie all this up. I gave me some excess here just for future, because I don't know, just to had it, figured I'd use it. I love it when I put everything back together and things still work. <laughs> all right, I got backup lights. Oh, and the little camera has uh, apparently backup for uh, night vision. We'll see how well that does. All right, we're all together. Uh, I gotta figure out how these lines work. Uh, it's got two sets of lines. I don't know that I actually need the lines that are in the stereo because it looks like the camera provides its own lines as well. So you can turn off this line here that's got the red and the green. You can turn off this other line that's just yellow behind it here. It's got the three lines. That appears to be coming through the camera, and this is coming from the radio. There you go. I've got a backup camera now. Yay. Maybe I can stop colliding with things. No, I've been pretty good since, uh, I haven't hit anything since I ripped the front bumper off Britain's car. <laughs> I paid for it, don't worry. I fixed it all up, gave it a new paint job, so, yeah, when I first got this truck, I was having a heck of a time. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. 
let's just say uh, there, there was two times I hit that vehicle with this pickup. <laughs> I had to, so I got it all fixed and painted for her, but uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I n never owned a vehicle this big. Uh, well, no, that's not true. I did have a Suburban for a very short period of time. Uh, but uh, not enough to actually get used to driving a vehicle this big. So, uh. <laughs> all right, I think I'm gonna take it out for a spin. So I've had the stereo now for a couple weeks and I really do enjoy it. Obviously, I've still got a lot of work to do on my stereo. I need to put uh, some of the material on the doors to keep them from rattling. And I want to get a subwoofer and uh, stuff like that. So real quick update, things I've learned since installing the backup camera and that kind of stuff. If you were to buy a stereo for this truck, a 2500 HD 2001, I think that it's worth the extra to go with a double DIN. You will have to spend some money to replace this whole panel here so that you can put a double DIN radio in there. But I think I would have rather had that. You will end up spending probably $200, $300 more by the time you're done to go that route but I think I would strongly recommend, even this brand is fine, but just get the double DIN version. Don't get this one with the screen. Unless you want a bigger screen, this is seven inch. But honestly, I think, I, I don't know. I think that overall, I probably would have been more happy with it being in the dash. So that's just my two cents but I'm not knocking the radio in itself. It's exactly what it is as described, works great. So a few things I've learned about the backup camera that I should have done differently. You saw how I use the assist wire or whatever they wanna call it that comes with the 33 foot backup camera video cable. I use that to trigger the radio to go into camera mode by connecting it to the positive off the reverse tail light. Really what you want to do is connect the trigger wire off the radio to a fuse that's for the reverse tail light somewhere in the front of your vehicle here. Then use the red wire that's part of the camera wire to send power from the radio. This radio has a power lead on it specifically for the backup camera. And that way, when you use the power cable that's specific for the backup camera, when you go into camera mode, it will give the backup camera power and turn it on. We'll go back out of here. Then if you use the trigger cable off a of fuse, when you go into reverse, that will still automatically flip. The reason why you want to do it that way regardless if you think you need to turn the backup camera on when you're not in reverse, is because when you're pulling power off the reverse, it will cause a flicker. And people have done things like add relays or capacitors and stuff like that to help prevent that flicker. But if you get your power from your radio, that will alleviate the problem altogether. Have the radio provide the power to the backup camera. Have the trigger come from a fuse that has nothing to do with the wire that you had to run all the way back to the back. And then you will not get that flicker. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna So I'm gonna pull ahead a little bit because I'll have to go in reverse for you to see this and I can't go back any further or I'll hit the car behind me. Which, as I said, I don't wanna keep hitting her poor car. Now, I'm gonna throw it in reverse. And that's fine. But now watch as I move the brake pedal. I'm hitting and letting go of the brake pedal. See the flicker? So that is the reason you would want to just use the power from the radio. And I'm driving up on the curb. Now, 
I know that if I go all the way to where the bumper touches the bottom, I've got a foot from my bumper, which if I had a hitch in, it would be pretty well touching. <laughs> if my hitch was in right now, you would see it sticking out. Probably, it would probably actually show up in this shot and it would be right about there. So, which would be almost touching her bumper. So that's basically where I want to stop. Another thing I want to mention about the radio is at night, the backup camera works wonderfully. You saw those little lights on there. They light up. I can see just fine at night. There's no concerns. It's it's it does a really good job. I love this. This backup camera has made this truck so much easier to deal with when trying to park in tight spaces. Big time easy. It's wonderful. I should have done it as soon as I got the truck. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have ran into her vehicle a couple times. And also, as I mentioned earlier, there's the lines. And so these are the lines provided by the camera. Now you're gonna see right where the wire is attached to the actual camera, there's a wire that says like backup lines or something like that. If you cut it, these will go away. And then you would use the lines in the radio. So let's go to settings. And you saw earlier where I had both lines on. We go to camera and see it's the parking assist guide. And so you'll notice when I have the parking assist guide on, I see double lines. So if you wanted to use the lines that come in the stereo, you would cut that wire for the parking assist lines. It's on the camera itself. But I'm fine just using the lines that are on the camera. I don't. I don't need it, but this is where you turn it off and on. It's under settings and then parking assist lines. And then you can adjust where those lines lie if you wanted to use them. But again, I've chosen just to use the lines that just come on the camera. To sum it up, my install is the quickest way to get it installed. Doesn't require anything but a 33 foot. The 20 foot is gonna be just too short for this length of a truck. By the time you run it under your dash and under the hood and, and all that, it's just, the 20 foot is not long enough. You can just run that one cable, solder it, solder it all together and be done, or connect to a fuse somewhere up here in front that's for the reverse lights and connect that to the trigger on the radio and then use the radio power to run through that 33 foot cable instead of using it as trigger. And then you won't have that flicker that you're seeing which I will probably change to that at some point. I don't feel like taking it apart right now. The flicker doesn't bother me that much. I will be putting a subwoofer in here eventually, and at that point, I'll probably go ahead and change how I've got that wired for the backup camera. So there you go. That's my final review on this radio so far. I do think, especially if you're doing off-road because of how this thing is kind of uh, bounces around a little bit, you probably should just get the doubled in radio that fits inside the dash and not go with this one. Uh, so that's my two cents. Hope you found it useful. Uh, but all in all, I do really like the radio, uh, except I should have gone with the one that just goes in the dash and spent the extra 200 plus dollars. Live and learn. All right, that is all. There you go, that's how close I am. And so if I had the hitch in there right now, it would still be, it'd probably be a comfortable distance of about maybe eight or nine inches between the hitch, maybe a foot between the hitch and the front bumper. So that's perfect.